Hi, this is Charlie, and I made my own arcade machine, full stand-up, and this video shows a little bit of how I made it and some of the stuff that it does. So here is a used cabinet that I bought. I decided to buy it rather than to build it because for what I paid for it locally, it just wasn't worth it. I could have made one, but it would have taken too much time and basically would have broken even. Uh, it just wasn't worth it. So I happen to live next to this particular place, which is one of the largest used arcade cabinet vendors in the country. This is only one of their three warehouses. Uh, so I opted to just restore a used cabinet. And it was important that I found one big enough to holster my 27 inch tube. The original 80s and 90s arcades only carried a 19 inch standard. So I had the bigger TV to put in there. And here is my bezel that I started making out of construction paper like poster board. And that's going to cover up the outside of the television. So then I made a wooden frame to go around the edge and that's what the poster board bezel will attach to. And then eventually it'll all get covered by some glass and look just like the bezel on an arcade machine. And then there were the old speakers that came with it. They were dried up, turned to dust when you touched them. Got rid of the original light, replaced it with a regular one, removed all the logos from the original one. You can see this was only set up for two players with only three buttons. And then I uh, basically covered it with a new design. And then I added enough for seven buttons per player, plus a bunch of across the top added some lighted colored buttons, joysticks, buttons on the side for pinball, uh, various things to make it nice. There's my painted glass bezel. Got a black spray paint around the outside and that covers up everything so when it's up and running looks legit. And this is the back side of the control panel. There's the buttons and the two joysticks. And here I've mounted the two circuit boards. One is for player one and the other one controls player two. Here's everything all wired up. It looks like a madhouse, but basically you hit a button on the top of the control panel. It sends the signal in one side of the circuit board and then that sends it down to the computer that runs the game you're playing. The computer sends it back up through the circuit board out through these wires and then back through the back end of the buttons to light the corresponding buttons for the game or music. And here is the brains. This is inside the cabinet. Obviously the computer runs everything but this little device here which is actually an energy saving device it's called the smart strip. Uh, it runs everything. So whatever's plugged into the blue section down here which is the computer it senses the load on the system and then anything that's plugged into the green section up here turns on and off like the marquee light and the, the tube and my sound system so basically you turn the computer on here and the smart strip recognizes the load and it turns on or off all these devices plugged into the green section so I just hooked up a button on the side of the arcade then I hardwired it into the motherboard on the computer and you turn the button on and everything comes on or off all at the same time it's pretty ingenious works out good for an arcade and here are my two beta testers I swear I didn't have this thing plugged in for 30 seconds before they were in the shop ready to play and the last thing I added was the lightning bolt marquee to match the control panel and this is the finished product Yeah! So this beginning section here, I'm just showing the different systems that I have added to the arcade. And each system, like the pinballs or the Nintendos or the Segas, each one has hundreds or even thousands of games in them. 
altogether on the whole system, um, close to 20,000 games. You can hear I have it set to talk. It'll announce the names of the games. Now some of these games need control paddles, just like you would when you're playing the arcade systems. Nintendo 64. This system requires you to use my game pads. Nintendo Game Boy Advance. You will need to use my game pad for this system. Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Please use my game pads for this system. Nintendo Entertainment System. Atari 2600. Music and video. Here's the jukebox, obviously. It plays music and videos. And this is the arcade. This is the one that has the bulk of all the games. This is the real arcade games that you would have played all in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s. Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat 3. Mortal Kombat 4. Now you can see you can spin through a wheel and select the games. The games have graphics on them, they've got little videos that play, show you what games you're playing. You can go into a favorites section, like a genre, and you can break it down by, you know, basketball games, bowling games, fighting games, all different types of subsystems you can navigate through. Nice graphics, video, Asteroids. and then obviously Asteroids. when you go into the game to play it, they become full screen. Just. Journey. Gyrus. Now if you notice, as I cycle through, Goes next. the buttons light up that correlate with the buttons on the game. So see Gauntlet uses two buttons. Galaga. Galaga just uses the one on player one. Frogger. Frogger doesn't use any. Elevator action. So as you cycle through the game and during gameplay, Donkey it will tell Kong. you what button does what. I'll just go back to some of the Mortal Kombat games Dick briefly Duck. because they have quite a few buttons. Moon but not only does it Mortal tell you Mortal what buttons do what, but it will announce it to you. It'll talk to you. Alright. Show them how it's done. High punch. Block. High kick. Low punch. Low kick. Run. Now there's another cool feature that this does, and uh, it lets you pause and save and load games. And again, this is not the console systems like at your home. This is the arcade games, the classic stand-up arcade games. So if I get to this point, I can hit pause, and then I can go into the pause menu here, and then I can save it to a specific location. Just choose a random button that I want, and then it'll save where I'm at, right there in the corner on that rope. So as I move forward, it's going to get to a point where I die. Okay, so here I die. Now it starts back at the beginning. So I go back into the pause menu. Yes, I got music playing in the background. Then I load the game. It's going to ask me where do I want to load it from. And I pick the selection. And there I am, back in the corner on the rope where I saved it from. So you can pause the old arcade games. And then I can also go back and load it from a different area. You can save multiple spots. So here I load it further in the game. Because I wail at Rastin. It's actually one of my favorite games. And being able to save and load is one of the coolest features of the system. I love it. Visual Pinball is an excellent choice. This particular ACDC. pinball system Visual has pinball. lots of good games, lots of bands. Black Sabbath with Dio. Lots of good games, some older games, some new ones. The graphics are good on all of them now. 
the Nuge. Rush 2112. Now you know I had to have a rush Learning. game. And here's Star Trek The Next Generation Pinball. That's good too. Welcome to the Enterprise. And of course we need to have Mario Kart 64 on here. Box. Finally, we'll wrap it up here. So I got the jukebox set to dance like an equalizer to the lights and then 